So let's start this one when a cancer patient named No Eyebrows creeps into Damascus, a Mission District dive bar. For years, the place's floor walls and ceiling have been painted entirely black, but that afternoon the owner added a new element, smashing 20 mirrors and gluing the shards to the ceiling so the pieces glimmered like stars, transforming Damascus into a planetarium for drunkards, dejected men and women stargazing from bar stools. When the first customer of the day walked in and witnessed the bar's broken mirror constellations, he said to the owner, there must be 10,000 years of bad luck hanging here. <laughs> well, that would certainly explain a few things. Owen said, who had a heinous birthmark underneath his nose that looked like a Hitler mustache. Damascus, Damascus always had rock and roll on the jukebox. Right then it was ACDC, playing the only chord progression they knew. They were howling about salacious women, which was funny because Damascus had an almost exclusively male clientele. Old drunks talking to themselves, trying to barter the price of a Corona with the bartender. Surly construction workers who drank from the minute they got off work until last call. Off-duty mariachis getting more tone-deaf with each tilt of tequila. <laughs> Insipid 20-something Caucasian boys, their cheeks stuffed with carbohydrates and college degrees. Here's to honor, one stupid fucking white boy would say. <laughs> getting honor and staying honor. <laughs> regulars, and one who haunted the place was named Shambles. She had acne scars all over her cragged cheeks, popped like the mirror shards glued to the bar's ceiling. Shambles was the patron saint of the hand job. She got strangers off for less than the price of a parking ticket. So far tonight, she'd done only one, though there would be more fondling to finance her bar tab. The night was young and full of fisted opportunities. <laughs> no eyebrows stood next to Shambles' stool and ordered a shot of peppermint schnapps. Owen placed the huge shots down on the bar, and as no eyebrows reached for it with a shaking hand, Shambles looked at his sallow skin the way it clung to him like a layer of film on cold chicken broth. Most people were shocked by his appearance because he reinforced the fact that everyone was going to die. People pursed their lips and averted their eyes, shaming him into near invisibility with the verve of their avoidances, trying not to ogle the prowling dead. But Shambles wasn't deterred or deflected or weirded out by his appearance. She saw him as a business opportunity. <laughs> Dollar signs, an untapped masturbation market. Do you mind if I drink with you? Shambles said to no eyebrows, and then asked Owen to pour her another whiskey. I like that, no eyebrows said. Thanks. Well, why are you thanking me for drinking with you? She said. I was raised right, he said. Cheers. Then he held his schnapps up in the air like a Bible in a minister's hand, a prop to retrofit the fragile world. But instead of echoing cheers, Shambles crashed her glass into his, spilling whiskey on her fingers and said, to livers aching like shin splints. <laughs> they drained their shots, flushed faces from the spirits, humidity spreading through their private ecosystems. I've never seen you here before, Shambles said. It's my first time. Well, what brought you into this dump? I was incredibly parched, he said. You don't seem like you have much in common with these deadbeats, she said. No eyebrows pointed at some of the men in their vicinities. Well, doesn't that make them the lucky ones? Shambles didn't know how to respond to this, didn't know what to do with that kind of tactless 
honesty amongst strangers, especially in bars. This was where men and women typically honed their espionage, cloaked in personas. See, deception was the norm. Cab drivers disclosed that they were venture capitalists. Rickety alcoholics morphed into ex-athletes. Those with anonymous office jobs had recently retired from the cubicle because of an important invention. In fact, one bloke even tried to convince a woman that he masterminded the caps lock key. Every interchange was a con, every night a pitiful fucking costume party. Except here was no eyebrows blowing the whole cycle of charades for everyone. Here he was having the audacity to be heartfelt in what was Shambles supposed to do with someone showing honesty. So instead of answering him directly, she turned her attention to tawdry commerce. Hey mister, how'd you like to get off, she said. I'll stop there, thank you very much.